Are you ready to organize the crafting chaos? Let's go. Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Courtney. Today's video is cram packed with tips and tricks on how you can organize your crafting space, your crafting supplies, your crafting room. I'm going to share with you some of my tried and true methods, along with some methods that I have changed over the years and some new things I'm putting into place this year. But stay tuned till the end because the grand finale is a craft table that I made that guess what? All you need are three supplies, no power tools. It provides lots of storage, a great workspace, and it's budget friendly so make sure you stick around for that now let's get into it let's take a look at my craft room so this is pretty much how it looks all the time this table is the biggest eyesore that is what's going away and my new craft table is taking its place most of my furniture is from ikea i've got a couple pieces from wayfair in here as well i will definitely link everything i possibly can from today's video down below in the description box or you feel free to ask me in the comments if you don't see it in the description box now this is my space I am in the game room of our house. That's where I'm set up. I've got this wet bar here that uh, I took the doors off of. I will say that I am planning to do a bunch of fun decorating in my craft room, but for now, I just want to get everything where I think I want it to make sure that this space will work for me before I do the fun stuff. But don't worry, I will share that. So I started by cleaning out. I started by grabbing a big box and getting rid of all the extra stuff. I was finding things like twine bows that I'd taken off Dollar Tree stuff. Like, why do I need to save that? If I've got twine, I can make the bow myself. So that was step one was cleaning out my entire space. Let's start off with this area right here. This is the wet bar area that I have. Um, I redid this a while ago where I redid the countertop and painted it black. Um, right here, I just have a huge stack of signs. Like there's just no good place to store these. These are things I bought on clearance that I could make signs with. Um, so they just stay there. Now for paintbrushes, I do like to separate them out by small, medium, large. I just find it helpful and kind of saves some time when I'm looking for a specific type brush. I kind of know where to look for that. And don't mind my lovely sink. It's been well loved. Um, inside here, this makeup silicone brush cleaner is game changer. If you have one of those, throw it in there. So nice to just clean those brushes. So that's always there and it works really well. And like I said, this, I don't know why I painted this black, like when I did this, because I <laughs> just not really a fan, but I have plans for some really fun wallpaper. And yet like, like what's right there, the Grinch. Uh, yeah, the creepy Grinch is right there. And then I also added this this year, a little mini fridge because who doesn't need to have a little Dr. Pepper every now and then. So that this space, I know not everybody has it, but for paint brushes, I definitely recommend separating them out. Now here's what this little area looked like before. And I want to start with these um, cubby systems that are on top of the dresser. This is kind of what it looks like now. I've made a few changes here and there. I added some glass canisters where the ribbon was. And then these tray bins right here, these came from Ikea. But what I love about them is they actually come with the hardware that you can mount on the wall. So one thing I would say, if you are limited on space, use your wall space to help you get storage. And what I have right here to be kind of efficient is in these bins, these are quick little gift ideas that I can make. That is tumbler water trackers, which is a DIY coming soon. But I've got like keychains and luggage tags and other types of tags, cake topper supplies, key fobs. It's just simple stuff like that. And then I've got a couple of extra glue things at the very top. So having this right here is just really nice because if I need to whip out a quick gift, I can grab one of these bins and whip something out super, super fast. Let's talk ribbon storage. So this is how I stored on my ribbon and it wasn't a terrible system, except when I'd go to pull ribbon and then the spin of death happened where it would just start unraveling and drop down. Yeah, I, and as you can see, I just would just stack ribbon around it. So I realized this is the better system for me. I did this once before and I've gone back to it. I just put it in a drawer. This is ribbon that I really don't use very often, uh, mostly to wrap gifts. And I just fig figured this would be easy because I can see it, I can put it away. But for my specialty ribbon that I do typically use for DIYs, I picked up this little thing on Amazon and it's really nice. You just thread your ribbon onto the little rods and then you can feed it through the hole, pull out how much you need and cut it and be done. So this is a great thing. If you use a lot of ribbon, I thought this would work great because I can just pick it up and easily move it to the table where I'm working and take it back. Whereas the other one, I'd have to walk over there, 
cut how much I think I needed. It just, this seems like a better system for the ribbon for sure. Jumping in to the video for just a minute to tell you about today's sponsor, Proven Skin Care. One of my other goals this year is self-care and it's starting with my skin. So I wanna tell you a little bit about today's sponsor because I think you're gonna love it. One of my biggest frustrations is trying to find a skincare system is finding one that can address multiple issues such as my dry and very sensitive skin. So when Proven reached out to me, I was excited to give it a try. Proven is a three-step skincare system, and what sets them apart is they tailor the products directly to you. So as I mentioned before, my biggest concerns are my dryness in my skin, sensitivity, and of course, aging, because who doesn't worry about aging? When you start with Proven, you're going to start by taking an online skin quiz. Now that quiz is based on 47 factors, including things like your unique skin and concerns, your environment, heritage to your skin's history, your lifestyle, and even the current season. Based on that information, Proven will then come up with a skincare system exclusively for you. The ingredients will target multiple issues at one time and address those needs. The system will also include a cleanser, a day moisturizer with SPF for daytime protection, and a night cream. I've been using Proven for a little over two weeks, and one thing Thing I have really noticed is that my skin feels more hydrated. I've also noticed that my skin looks a little lighter and brighter and the redness on my chin is not as prominent. Proven products are backed by scientific research and completely simplifies the skincare process with their three-step routine. If you use my proven link, try provenskin.com slash creative on the cheap and code creative 99, you can get your own personalized three-step skincare system from proven for just $99. I'm definitely excited to continue this journey to better skin. Now let's get back to another one of my goals, staying organized. The next drawer in this dresser was this one right here below the ribbon. And this is all those little wood cutouts, all the little wood cutouts, the wood ornaments. I had it organized at one point, but I just continued to, so you can see the little containers there from Dollar Tree. It was working, but then it just kept getting more and more stuff in it. So I knew I had to come up with something to get this contained. To do that, I grabbed one of these it's a four by six photo holder. It comes with labels and these are the perfect size to put all of those little wooden pieces in. I grabbed my label maker and I just started making labels for them and I stuck them in there, closed it up and y'all, I'm telling you this just streamlined that entire drawer. Now for the ornaments, I did go ahead and continue to use Dollar Tree uh, containers and I just kind of group them by season, which makes it super easy to find them and hopefully be able to see exactly what I have so I won't buy any more until I use up what I've got. The rest of the drawers in this dresser were a little chaotic. It was just mostly a bunch of wood stuff that I just let get out of control. And the best way that I could organize this is in one drawer, I kind of just put the bigger wood blank pieces right here, just pieces, trays and some shims and just like those wooden canvases. As far as the other drawers, what I found to be very helpful was after I cleaned it out to use some of those clear, I guess, desk organizers because I could just sort them by the size and now I can kind of see what I have in there. And then the other thing I like to use are just bags, clear bags, make it really easy. You can kind of manipulate them and gain a little extra space just by stacking on them and you can definitely see what's inside because they're clear. Inside the cabinets to either side of the dresser, I've just got a bunch of the Dollar Tree locker bins. I absolutely love these, $1.25, you can't beat them. I've had these for years and years. Slap a label on there and you're good to go. You can often get them in all kinds of colors, but they work really, really well for storing items on bookshelves or in this case in cabinets. Now I also, as far as my beads go, I do like to continue to put them in mason jars. I've cut that system in place for quite a long time. I just like it. I don't know. I find it pretty easy. Occasionally I do have pieces like this where it's just a little more decorative. This has got my fabric glue, my wood glue and my foam glue sticks, but I don't do a lot of those because often they're not very efficient when it comes to storage. 
scooching on down to this piece of furniture. It came from American um, Warehouse and this is kind of my laser corner as well as miscellaneous supplies. I've just got stuff for the laser pieces like that. But two systems I use in this piece of furniture paint storage. So I find it very helpful to put it in a drawer. But what I like to do is take the paint color and put it on the cap, let it dry. And what this does is it saves you time. You don't have to pull the bottle out. You don't have to open the cap to get the true color. You can see it right there dried on the cap and it just makes it a lot easier. The next thing that I like to do, and you guys have seen this before, is this is what I keep all my colored glue sticks in. But what I like to do is I use foam board to kind of personalize these containers. So maybe you pick up some larger containers, but you want to section it off and kind of make it a little more custom inside. Foam board is going to be your best friend. And I've got another great hack for this and just a minute with foam board. So hang on for that. Moving down uh, the before of this messy table and my messy craft room there. And then of course, got my little fireplace set up behind me. You guys you see me stage stuff all the time, but this is my craft desk. It came from Wayfair and I love this thing. It actually can be a two person desk. So there's a drawer on this side, a drawer on the opposite side. You can see a little divider there. So two people can work at this desk. It also came with this attachment that has this pegboard. If you have the ability to put a pegboard by your craft desk, it's a game changer. And then it came with this cabinet as well. I kind of wish it was all pegboard, but a new system I have are these labels. Now these labels are for cords. I don't know if you're like me, but I find myself with all these different cords. And of course I leave them like this in the thing and then I can never remember what it goes to. So now I am labeling all the cords to all the different little gadgets I have. And of course the tabletop um, desk supply, power supply thing is awesome to have. I highly, highly recommend that for sure. When it comes to all those paint pens, Sharpies, markers, this is a new system I actually put into place, I think around summertime last year. Love this thing. Bought it on Amazon. It just makes it so easy to grab the markers I need. Another tip I have, I said, use your walls. Guys, use your furniture too. I love to put 3M hooks on the sides of pieces of furniture and hang mats. It's the perfect location for those. Here is the before of my Cricut, I guess, supplies and sublimation supplies in this little cubby system. And this is kind of the few changes that I made here. This is the Calax system uh, from Ikea. And one thing I'm trying new is this little vinyl holder. You might've seen my good friend Whitney shared this. And so I wanted to give it a go and see how it would work holding vinyl. When it comes to vinyl scraps, I like to put them in three inch ring binders and I use these zipper bags that clip nicely into the binder. Each binder is a different type of vinyl. So I've got permanent, I've got glitter, I've got iron on and then specialty and it works really, really well for all of those little scrap pieces of vinyl. Here is my other suggestion for using foam board. So if you need to make yourself a paper stacker or any type of cubby organization system, just cut some foam board. That's all I did here. I figured out how tall I wanted it to be. I cut two pieces of foam board, cut a piece to put on top. It's sturdy. You can secure it with glue. You can make it freestanding if you want to, but if you have a cubby system, this is great. Moving to the workstation I have right across from my Cricut stuff is this cart I want to talk about real quickly. So this cart, um, originally it was like my emergency craft cart. So I had like scissors and tape and I had all the things in there. But then what I use it for now is with seasonal stuff, anything I pick up that can just be used for any DIY, not anything specific, but just embellishment, things like that. I put it there. And so when I'm working on a project, I can drag it over. And if I feel like a project needs just a little something, I can look at the cart and usually easily grab something off. Now the table that this cart is pushed up against is this one. It's got my diode laser along with my Cricut on this table. So this is where I cut out all my Cricut crafts. And like I said, use your furniture. There we go. Another 3M hook holding my Cricut mat. And then a tried and true method of storing all the Cricut blades. I've used this little thing for years. I just put them all in here, have it nice and labeled so it works out really well so I know which blade goes to what. 
And the last big area, this was kind of the before of this little area of my craft room. And all I did was streamline this, kind of put all my display trays up there. This area is probably my least visited area of my craft room. It's all those one-off things. Occasionally I pick up a tool from here, occasionally a piece of felt. So it just kind of houses all those random sometimes I might need it supplies. And then of course, I also have a little area for my sublimation. I've got my heat press, tumbler press, mug press in this area. Now, one thing I definitely wanted to do, like I've mentioned, I'm planning on doing some real fun decorating in here. Once I know my craft room is set how I want it, I added some Govee strip lights to this because I just wanted to have the chance to put color up whenever I did. So these lights are awesome. So many options. I, I'm just going to line it up along the molding. I thought that would be the easiest thing. And sure enough, that's what I did. And I absolutely love these lights. It's so fun to play with them. And it just, I don't know, it just brightens the room and makes it so fun. All right, let's revisit this. The demise of this table, it's going away. So let's remember, I told you this, all it was was a junk fest. So this is actually what the table looks like when there's not anything on it, which is very rare. I almost kind of forgot what it looked like. Got rid of the table and here is the new craft desk that you can very easily make. This is it. Now I've got some things stored here. I still have some beautification to do to it. All you need are two cubby systems and a tabletop. I got my tabletop on Amazon as well as the two cubby systems. You could pick any size you want. It fits the Dollar Tree bins. Um, those are the white bins there. And then on the other side, I just have some clear bins that I picked up from Amazon. Another system I like to do is I put my projects in bins. So if I want to grab a project, I can work on it and then throw the supplies back in there in case I get bored of it or just can't think of an idea. I can grab a different bin and it keeps it contained and keeps it together. And there you have it, guys. This is the status of my craft room. Like I said, I am planning to do some real fun decorating, some flowers and pennant banners. I'm just going to do some really fun stuff in here. I definitely will share that. Please let me know down below in the comments if you have a good organization hack or tip for your craft supplies, your craft room. Share it down below so that we can all get the information. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I really do appreciate it. Here are some more videos you might enjoy, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.